Hey guys, Mark from Gunplay Network. Welcome to my review of the Zaku 2 FZ from the RE100 line. Big thanks to Hobbyco for seeing this kit my way for review. So, as you can see here, spinning around right in front of you, it's that's the bare minimum, that's what it looks like straight out of the box. It's got good color separation. The yellow hoses were interesting because they're rubber, not plastic at all. Um, and yeah, it was just, it was a really fun, kind of fast build. It's basically a big HG. Obviously RE100, not a whole lot of inner frame, but good color separation, pretty good detail for a non-MG. And as you can see here now, I've loaded him up. He, This is what he comes with. Uh, there's a couple of bits left over in the box with the grenades and the heat hawk spare head, but that's him fully loaded. That's what you've got. Out of the box, no panel lining, no gloss, no paint detail touch-ups, no stickers. That's it. He's pretty good looking, I must admit. I was really impressed with this kit. Uh, it was an easy build, fun build, wasn't bored at all overall, and it didn't cause me to scream and invent any new curse words. So. That's one thing. So this uh, design was featured in 0080 War in the Pocket, the anime OVA. It's featured in, I think you'll actually see it in uh, Gundam UC or Unicorn as well uh, at the attack on Torrington base, it's with the Efreet. And this was developed later in the One Year War. So it was a kind of last run uh, upgraded Zaku 2s. So we'll put some lore along here in the video. Now, Let's take him apart and uh, minus a hand, obviously, sorry, that's attached to the rifle over there. So here he is. This is uh, the articulation now. So you can see there you get a couple of different colors. You get some dark green, some light green, some grays, reds, um, and the yellow hoses. That's pretty much it. That's, that's all you've got, a few basic colors. You could do some detail painting. Um, there was a good part separation. So if you wanted to paint all the red bits, they're all separate, no stickers. Now, if I take the heat hawk off the back, let's take a look around. This is one of three heads. This is the commander head. Uh, there's also, I think they call this the A type. There's also a B type head, which is more World War II, um, you know, German square looking helmet. Uh, you can, and there's also a third head, which is the one without the commander. Um, you'll see a lot of them more in the pocket, just the, the basic grunts. So, you got a different choice there, which was I thought was really cool when you were building it. The mono eye does move. It's got the same switch that a HG or an MG would have below, so you can turn the mono eye um, and just pop that from underneath. You can use your tweezers. Going around, the head has a bit of back, not really much in the forward, uh, and we'll go around with some persuasion. Now, looking uh, here on the chest uh, torso area, much like the HG Origin kits I've seen, you can actually pull out forward on that. There's a bit of movement to give you some more forward motion when he's standing there or in a flight pose, I guess, looking from above. The arms have the spike shield on one shoulder and the bear shield on the other. They're on a um, ball joint just poked into a poly cap inside the arm. So they will move a little bit, but they can pop off easily too. So. Uh, shield will spin all the way around and get you some good uh, movement. The arms, like I said, they do fold forward on the chest a bit, but then the polycapped uh, pieces inside will pop all the way forward as well. It's got some really good articulation there. The arm will spin all the way around. You do have uh, just the ball joint hands there, so a little bit of motion on those. You will get a pretty good bend out of this. Oh, sorry, you do have some uh, side turn there um, with the forearm. And the actual whole arm will turn a whole way around. That's just on a peg as usual. So now if we were to bend the arm, oh, really good detail in there too, sorry guys. If you bend the arm, it will bend up and then keep bending. It's got a double bend in the arm, which is really cool. It's a great range of motion. And it wasn't sticky, they're not hard to move, uh, not stiff at all. While we're back here, let's take a quick look. The backpack just uh, pegs in. There are three uh, thruster verniers on the bottom and a couple of little ones on top. Now, the one, they're inside on the top, so no movement, and these don't really have a, any movement at all. Uh, but great that the red is actually inside, and that's a separate piece you can pop out and paint. All right, if we go back around to the front, oops, that does, yeah, that comes off. It will go up, but then you'll hit the shoulder 
um, arm there. So you can go a fair way up to the top level over the shoulder and that's pretty good articulation. But like I said, once you've got that spike shoulder piece on, you can't really do it. So if you don't have that on, you'll be able to get it all the way up parallel. The other shoulder you probably can. Now here on the side skirts, um, you've got some weapons containers, you've got the grenades and the ammo pack holder. Um, they can go up a little on their own. The front skirt will go up as usual. They are separate pieces. And the reds, as I said in there, you can see below. You could cover that with some plow plate if you were detailing, um, but you can see it from underneath if you don't. Some more detailed bits underneath on the groin there. And the legs will turn, that's a peg system there at the top of the ball that's connecting it to the hip joint. If we look down here, uh, that back cover won't move, but the lower back cover actually pops out much like the Sazabi did with the RG. Uh, that's really cool. On the back, there's some detail at the joints. The leg will bend further than the back skirt allows, but obviously the um, vernier cover or thruster cover will hit the back skirt so that's going to stop you it goes a fair amount of way up the front skirt cover moves and those rubber pipes i don't know how i'd go painting those but they were far less infuriating than dealing with the rg or the mg zaku um, little bits that you have to cut out and if you've ever built those kits you'll know what i'm talking about and thread down a um, hose or a steel spring so good range of motion on the legs including the feet uh, will go up at the front piece and the ankle has uh, some, you know, the usual range of motion you get on a ball joint. All right, let's dive on into the accessories. So everything you can see here in front of you, you have the holding hands, the open hands, uh, the rifle. The rifle is really cool. So this is a different Zaku machine gun. Uh, I think it's a lower caliber. It says it's 90 mil instead of 120 mil, but has magazines, a grenade launcher. And it was re it's really detailed and really easy to build. Now on the side skirt here, I mentioned weapons uh, containers. So if you lift that up from underneath, which I'm having trouble with my gloves, it's actually got a spare magazine in there. So you can, you know, throw that one to the ground and have it holding like it's reaching for a magazine. So good detail. Uh, the back uh, piece there of the rifle I haven't opened up, but um, that's just like a little stabilizer bar on a machine gun. There's your open hand. And there's your two holding hands for the heat hawk or yeah, you, you get both hands on the heat hawk, I guess. Now, what you don't get is you only get two of the green backing colors that you need for the hands, which is kind of sucky on this kit. I would have thought for this amount, um, like two bits of plastic, they could have thrown that in. But I guess you, unless you're playing with it, it's fine just in posing. Now, there's your peg for holding underneath uh, for the action base adapter. Now with the Heat Hawk, this one's a really interesting build. So as you would have seen on the back skirt, it had the really short handle on it. This is the long handle. So if you want to hold it two-handed or be swinging it around the air on its long handle, cool. Or this one just clips in in place of it too. And that's the short handle for storage on the back skirt or just for a one-handed swing, I guess. Now that part comes off on the front, The I guess the active mode. Well, it doesn't really have an inactive mode on this one. Um, and you get two of those, but you only get one heat hawk. The grenades. The grenades are really cool. So you've got those on the side skirts. And what you get is those in the side skirts are obviously in the inactive. They haven't been pulled open to throw yet. Uh, they're on that little piece that you can see there on the ground. But if you pick up the big piece and slide the tab in up that way, there is your grenade uh, to be held in the hand and ready to be thrown. So, you know, Bandai put a lot of thought into this. It's not great they're all red, but I mean, that's an easy paint job. The stickers, I didn't use any of. You know, I'm not a huge fan of using the stickers unless I have to. So for now, I probably will paint this beast and I've just left it like that. Here you can see him uh, backed up to my um, MG Mark II Titans 2.0. Uh, that's been painted since the last review with uh, water slides, scribing, additional parts. So I put some photos up recently. Um, so there's just for a size comparison with an MG and mine obviously has some additional surface details right now, but this guy was pretty detailed, uh, good parts, uh, color separation, part separation, 
and uh, you know bare minimums but he is a grunt suit so it comes with a couple of weapons all right guys that pretty much brings me to the end of the review so i would say this is a buy if you're a fan of 1 100 kits and maybe you're just not feeling like a master grade you know you don't want to build a deep striker which is the polar opposite end of this thing you just want something simple re 100 kits this is my first i definitely would buy again it's pretty awesome detailed without having to build a full-on inner frame so that's really cool all right here you go i've got him standing in a pose like i said so he could be uh swinging the machine gun up for a shot and then you know you've got the other hand the expressive open hand and he's reaching for his magazine this was really fun to play with and pose so yeah definitely a, a buyable kit i would say all right guys that brings me to the end of the review thanks very much for joining me remember to subscribe like leave a comment tell me what you thought about the kit or what other kits you'd like to see reviewed on gn